Okay, so this is another one of those quick videos about uh, forces. Um, another revision lesson that is. And uh, guys, pen, pencil, calculator at hand. I'm going to be teaching you a little bit about components of forces and why we might want to use them. Okay, now here's the major reason why we might want to use some components of forces. Um, sometimes you just cannot add forces. So some forces cannot be added because they're not in a single plane and that means that they're not in a straight line. So that means that they're not, you know, aligned with each other. So I just want to, you know, forces which are directly aligned with each other. Those two forces you can add because they're in a straight line. Or they're not at right angles. Well, you know, a force like that and a force like that. I can add those. But sometimes I've got really weird angles and, uh, you know, you just can't add these. Now, this is how components work. If you break them down into their components, these can be added. So you can add components of forces and that's why we might want to do these. So let's jump straight in. Okay, so let's jump straight into an example over here. I've got a 60 and a 40 Newton force and for anyone with any sort of maths can kind of figure out that uh, 60 degrees west of north and 65 degrees east of north, you know, those don't add up to 90. So that's a bit of a problem. I've got a 40 Newton over here and a 60 Newton over here and you just can't add these. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to break these up into components. Now what that means is I'm going to break them up into pieces which either run this way or this way. Now you've got to decide on your axes. So this is, you know, the, the cardinal points, the so north, south, east and west. So I'm going to break them down into a north-south and east-west components. The first thing you've got to do is you've got to decide which direction is going to be positive. So I've decided that uh, north is going to be positive for me and that um, on the east-west axis I'm going to make east positive. And that's just the way that I'm going to deal with this particular example. Okay, so let's get into breaking these up and finding a resultant for these two. That's usually why you want to make some components. So here we go. I've just made a little bit of extra space. Let me show you how to uh, draw components in the first place. Now the way that you start to draw components, because they're not real forces, you've got to use dotted lines. Now the rule is that your two dotted lines must still add up to the original force that you had in the first place. In other words, these two pieces have got to meet each other head to tail and uh, they've got to have your original force as their resultant because if you added together your components you should still have the same force. So let's do it for the 40 Newton force. Now there's two different ways that you can do this. Uh, what I'm going to do is there is my north-south component is going up and to the left. Now let me just run through this. So that means I started in the same place and I ended up in the same place. So what I'm going to do now is I'm just going to draw this triangle separately so we can work with it a little bit. So there's my original force of 40 which is a hypotenuse because your original force is always a hypotenuse of your triangle. Now notice how my components are made of these dot lines. I'm not drawing that very neatly. Okay, but there's two dotted lines and those are my two components. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to label these. Let's just call this uh, F component 1 and that's my north-south F component 2. Okay, so that's really not too bad. Um, you know, sometimes this might be Fy or Fx or whatever might be the case if you've got xy components. The very important thing is I've chosen to draw a triangle which has got the angle which I was given and that's 60 degrees over there. So how do I work out these components? Well, since I've got a angle and I've got a right angle triangle, um, it's actually pretty easy. All I've got to do is I've got to use sine and cos and tan. Now let's just talk about uh, the north-south components. So the north-south component over here is um, force component 1. So let's try and figure out what to do with that. Okay, so force component 1. Now since force component 1 is the adjacent side of a triangle, I'm going to go ahead and say 40 cos 60. And uh, if you don't know where I got that, I suggest you go and do a little bit of mass revision because you should know that cos 60 mm -hmm. is equal to my adjacent side over my hypotenuse. Okay, so um, yeah, let's play around with that. So I'm just going to pause this for a second and work that out for you. Okay, so it's 20 newtons and don't forget. So I've got 20 newtons and that's in a north direction. 
Okay, so I figured out that the vertical components of this, or at least on my diagram, the north-south components of this is 20 newtons north. Now, because we decided that uh, you know up was positive and to the right on our diagram was positive, this is positive 20 newtons to the north. Okay, I must always state things in terms of my positive direction. What about the east-west components? Let's deal with that. So that's force component number two. And if you are sharp, then you know that this is 40 sine 60. That's going to give us a slightly stranger number. Okay, and there's our answer. It's 36.64 newtons. And here's a problem. It's in the westerly direction. So we're going to have to figure out, you know, what to do with that. That's positive west, but um, it's, negative, it's negative east. When we come to adding these forces up, you'll see what I mean. Okay, so let's just tackle this other triangle over here, the 60 Newton force. I hope that you can do this. I want you to pause this and try this out for yourself. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to start tracing in a new triangle over there. I'm going to still have exactly the same result as I did before. 60 Newtons is my hypotenuse. There's force component uh, 2. Let's keep it exactly the same labeling. Force component number 1. And let's deal with this. Okay. So force component one, um, I'm going to speed this up a little bit just to speed things along. Okay, so there we have a 25.34 newtons north. Let's see how much the eastern component is. And that's 54.3 newtons east, so that's a positive force. Now I've got to find a way of, you know, kind of getting these into a, a more reasonable fashion. Now you can actually start to add these forces. I can add two northern forces together. I can add a west to an east, but they're just going to have different signs. So what I'm going to do now is let's start fresh. And let's redraw our components and let's add them up together. Okay, so what I've done here is I've just replotted those um, those components. And what we're going to do is we're going to add them together. Let me just remind you of the positive directions. There we go. And on that plane, there's positive directions. So let's start dealing with the uh, north-south. Okay. So the F res for north-south is equal to, uh, let's just deal with these north-south ones. Okay, so I've got a positive 20. So there we go, positive 20 um, plus, uh, there we go, positive 25. See, they're both north, so they're both positive. And what we get out of all of that is uh, an answer over here. Okay, 45.34 newtons north, and that is our complete one there. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to freeze this for a second, and we're going to try to do the east-west components. Okay, so take a look at what I've done here, is I've added the east-west components there and there. This one is negative because it's in the westerly direction. My positive direction was towards the east. This one is a positive component. Okay, so when we add these together... There we go, there's my answer. 17.74 newtons east. I knew it was east because it is a positive number, and I chose east as positive. If it was negative, that means that you've got to rewrite it as a positive. Um, and that's what I mean by that is if it came out as negative 17.74, you've got to rewrite it as F resultant east-west is equal to 17.74 newtons west. So you've got to rewrite your negative answers. Okay, so how do I apply components to a question like this? A question like this might say a 6 kilogram object is being pulled along the floor by a 40 newton force at 60 degrees to the horizontal. So there we go, we've got 60 degrees to the horizontal and we have a 10 newton, probably a frictional force um, exerting in the opposite direction. I would like to know what is F resultant for this entire thing. So what I'm going to do is, um, you know, I'm going to do a free body diagram, but here's the issue. This 40 newton force is at an angle, so I want you to break it into components for me. So I'm going to ask you to pause this video for a second, break it into components for me, and we'll get back. Okay, so I'm going to ask you to, uh, you know, write this down for a second. I'm just going to pause for a second and write them down. Okay, so there we've got it. Uh, we've got our two components here. So my parallel, so that's F applied parallel, is equal to 40 cos 60 because it's the adjacent. Uh, that means that this has the effect of pulling 20 newtons off to the right. And also, if I do the same thing for my perpendicular component, 34.64 newtons upwards. So that's how strongly this 40 newtons is pulling directly upwards. Now, since that's not enough to exceed 6 kilograms of weight, you know, 6 kilograms times 9.8 is a much larger value, in fact. 
times 9.8, that's equal to uh, 58.8. Now, you'll see that your perpendicular component doesn't really do much to your object. It's not going to move it. It's not big enough for weight. The thing that I'm really concerned about is the component to the right. So I've actually got two horizontal components. I've got a uh, force applied parallel, and that's the thing which is fighting the frictional force of 10 newtons. So uh, what is the resultant of these two? The result of these two, if you add them up, so F resultant of all the parallel forces, it's equal to, and let's make right positive. So I'm going to add negative 10 for the frictional force plus positive 20, and that is going to give me a grand total of positive 10 newtons to the right. And that is the resultant of all of these forces acting on this object. Um, watch out for another video perhaps on objects on a slope, but this is pretty much how you find resultants of really strange forces acting on objects at angles.